Good morning. We are here at the Basalt Community Garden at the Basalt Library plot. And I just, it's such a beautiful day. The gardens are blooming like crazy. Out in the field behind us, the mustard is in full bloom also. Almost every plot here at the garden is taken this year. It's been a banner year for the community garden and it'll be a banner year for all the vegetable and flower growers. It's just a beautiful sight. If you haven't been out or you're curious about what happens out here, just take a gander out by the high school. You can ride your bike or drive your car. Remember, no dogs allowed, but come and check out these beautiful little plots. Here's our plot for the community garden. And as you can see, it's doing pretty well. This morning, Denise Schranker of the Eagle County Extension is going to join us and we're gonna talk about thinning some of our crops how to harvest, what happens when you have something you don't know what it is, and what to do if something goes to seed or flowers like some of our radishes are doing. Here's our friend Denise from the Eagle County Extension Office. Hello, so today we're gonna talk about a couple different things. Um, I wanna start with harvesting lettuce. So there's uh, two different ways you can harvest lettuce. You can cut the whole entire head off or the whole entire plant off kind of at the base. Um, and you're typically going to do this with head lettuce. Uh, so this would be things like bib or um, romaine or some of the butter crunches. And so you would do that with a lettuce kind of like this. Yeah, so you can use scissors to cut them off. Um, easy enough. And then you just go to the base. And cut. Denise, what happens to the rest of the um, lettuce then? That's still in the ground. Yeah, so that um, you can leave there and it will regrow. Um, so you can just leave that one there and then you might get a fall crop. Sometimes I also will just replant some seeds um, if I want a different variety to go in after it um, or I want it to speed up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, and then the other way to harvest lettuce is just by picking its leaves. Um, and so you can do that with things that also works for spinach and chard, which we have over here. Um, but you can do that for a head lettuce too, if you just want to pick a few leaves while it's still kind of bulking up the center part. Um, so for the chard, we have a great chard crop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going going really well. So for those, you just go and cut off leaves until you gathered as much leaves as you'd like. Um, and one thing, and this is a really common pest of chard and of spinach and of um, some of the other leafy greens, it's called leaf miner. And so what this insect does, and this one you can really see its little tunnel here, it gets in between um, it gets in the middle of the leaf and just eats inside of there. It's not a big deal. Um, I just take the leaves that it's mined and throw them out. Can they go into the compost? They can. Okay. Yeah. And is the chard like the other lettuce where once you have snipped off some and, and harvested that, it will keep growing and produce new leaves? Oh yeah, okay. yep. it'll just keep going um, until it gets frosted hard. So you kind of have to stay on top of it. Yes. 
Yes, you want to kind of be cutting off some leaves uh, like once a week. All right, so we just harvested some chard. And while I was harvesting, I found a little ladybug in here. Um, if you see ladybugs in your garden, that is fantastic. These little guys love to eat aphids. Uh, especially the larval form of the ladybug. Um, I encourage you to get online and look up ladybug larvae because they look very different than an adult ladybug. And the larval form is actually what eats a majority of the aphids. Um, so look that up and learn to recognize them because those guys are good for your garden. So you want to leave them there. All right, so now we're gonna talk about thinning beets. And you want to make sure that you go through and thin your root vegetables um, because otherwise they won't have enough room to expand and they'll just kind of not form a nice, um, nice big root. And so I usually like to make sure they've got uh, about an inch or so um and so there's a few little ones in here i'm just gonna pull out and if the leaves are pretty large you can save those and eat the leaves so let's see this little guy those ones are pretty good And even at this stage when they have pretty big leaves, thinning them will still help them, help the ones that are remaining to grow nice and plump? Yeah, ideally you want to do it um, when they're still fairly small, mm -hmm. um, but the it's still going big. to yeah. be helpful. Yes, yeah, so if they're already fairly large, then you can kind of just leave them. Um, but if there's a few that are a little bit smaller mixed in there, you can go ahead and pull those guys out. So like these guys are pretty big and they're kind of already developing a fairly large tuber there. So I'll probably just leave them. This one. I like this one too. Kind of stubborn. Yeah. Yeah, so these ones you can kind of feel they've already got a decent sized decent sized. Mm -hmm beets so I'll probably just leave them okay and they might just turn out a little long and misshapen but it doesn't matter edible yes <laughs> yep still tasty all right so now we're going to talk about bolting and bolting is something that happens to a lot of our cool season um, crops so this will happen to lettuce spinach radish um, a lot of the most of the greens it doesn't happen so much to the coal crops like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, because those are technically biennial. Um, so they tend to bolt in their second year of growth. So we don't have a problem with, with that. Um, occasionally, if you plant 
uh, your broccoli or those other biennial cold crops really early. Sometimes they'll bolt at the end of the year, um, but not often. So this is what radish looks like when it starts to bolt. Um, and so this means, bolting just means it sends up a stem and it starts to flower. And this is a response um, to hot weather. So when it starts to get too hot, that's when they'll start to flower. And bolting affects the taste of vegetables. So it typically makes them uh, pretty bitter. So you don't want to let your, um, you wanna make sure you're harvesting your radish and lettuce and spinach before it starts to send up that flower. Or if you notice that it looks like it's kind of starting to do something at the top, then go ahead and harvest that because um, it's probably about to bolt. Some other things that will do that are um, cilantro as well. And uh, yeah, those are kind of the kind of the main ones. So one other thing I forgot to mention with the bolting. Um, so the, the root crops, like the radish, it tends to make them really woody and hard, uh, so then they're not edible either. And over here we have our sunflowers and our peas, and our peas are actually climbing our sunflowers like we had planned, um, so that was exciting since it was a little bit of experiment, but we've got some peas starting here, and to harvest the peas you can just pull them right off there. Other things we've got in here, um, so these are the sunflowers, and then we have a different variety of sunflower. Um, and then here, these are some marigolds that just volunteered here. They just started to come up. Um, but marigolds are nice to have in the garden. They kind of deter rabbits and things. So we'll go ahead and leave them there. In the middle, we have another kind of mystery crop. It's some sort of, some sort of brassica. Um, and we're just gonna leave that as well. Sometimes, um, so if you're looking at this, you can see there's some tiny little holes. These tiny little, uh, it looks like something just drilled into it. A little drill. These are from an insect called flea beetle. They're a small shiny black insect and they're kind of hard to spot. They're called flea beetles because they jump like a flea. Um, so if you lean down and see a little black thing kind of hop off your plant and see damage like this, it might be flea beetle. Um, we're gonna leave this here because um, Hopefully the flea beetles will be more attracted to this brassica and leave our other ones alone. Um, that technique's called trap cropping. So if you see something that um, it's eating, it might be near your vegetables, but it's eating another plant, you can go ahead and leave that plant. Um, and hopefully it'll stay on, stay on your, uh, trap crop. So here we have another um, insect pest that's very common on broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, all of those um, mustard coal crops. And so this is some sort of cabbage worm um, right here. And they are the they are the culprits that's causing the holes in this uh, this plant. When they're smaller, they're, they look kind of like that. So they look the same, just quite a bit smaller. And these, they're fairly easy to just pick off and squash. Um, there's also quite a few different products that are for vegetables and safe to eat that will uh, work on cabbage loopers. So things with BT work on them. Um, any of the insecticidal soaps work on 
these guys, um, as do the horticultural oils. Or you can just pick them off and squish them. All right, so we also have something in here that we're not quite sure what it is. Um, we have this plant here, and since this is a community garden, um, sometimes you're going to get volunteer plants that somebody might have planted last year, and either maybe the seed didn't germinate last year, or maybe their crop went to seed, or, you know, um, fruited and the fruit fell on the ground, and then it's reseeding itself that way. Um, since we're not quite sure what it is, and it looks to me like it's something in possibly the um, nightshade family, which is also the family that tomato, potato, um, eggplant, those are all in. We're just gonna leave it for now and see, see what it does. So if you have something that you're pretty sure isn't a weed, but you're not sure what it is, go ahead and leave it and then you can see when it starts to flower um, what it is. All right, so I just wanted to remind people um, about the Grow and Give program. Um, so the Grow and Give program, if you go to the website, growandgivecolorado.org, there is so much information about growing vegetables. We have some, um, some new information about vegetable diseases. So each vegetable has um, information about all of the common issues it has with pictures. So if you have something going on with some of your plants, um, that can help you figure it out. You can also still register your garden with the Grow and Give program. Um, and this is just pledging that any extra produce you have, um, you know, those zucchinis that you just don't know what to do with, um, that you will donate those to a local food bank or to a neighbor or friend in need. Great. Denise, thanks so much. We really appreciate you coming over again. Oh, thanks.